this is the question this morning. Do you think you have the skill, the ability, the intelligence to be an astronaut? Of all the people on Earth, only 557 have ever travelled to space. British astronaut Tim Peake is one of them, and now he has revealed the puzzles and the tests that he had to complete before being sent to the International Space Station. It was rigorous, to say the least. Uh, we're going to talk to Tim in a moment. First, let's remind you of that moment, the 15th of December 2015. That's when he set off on that journey of a lifetime. Donald say that Tim's with us now. Good morning. Good morning. Is it? Do, do you still have that moment when you look at that and you think, wow, that was me? I do, yes, yeah. I mean, it's great. I, it just takes me straight back to looking at planet Earth from space and working on the space station, so it's wonderful to see. I interviewed you a couple of years ago now, That's obviously, right. when you came back down. We had a really good chat, and I remember when I spoke to you, you were still recovering physically, and yes. it was going to take you quite a long time yeah. for your muscles to come back to you know where you mm -hmm. are now physically for your, almost your organs to readjust That's as right, well yes, how, yeah. how long did it take are you all kind of back to pre-space Tim so to yeah speak. absolutely in in fact the last checks of bone density are all back to normal and that's the thing that takes the, the longest sometimes up to two years uh, after landing to fully recover your bone density um, but after six months the flight surgeons are pretty happy that you're you're okay six months mission in space six months recovery did it worry you at all when you when you hear about the side effects of space mm. I mean yes accidents can you know we've seen some terrible things happen in, in terms of space um, shuttle disasters but in terms of physically, what happens to you after? You're a dad, you're a husband, yes. you know, you're a family man. You, you, you need to be fit for your family as much yeah, as anything. We, we take it all very seriously, of course, but we have such a fantastic team of flight surgeons um, and exercise uh, specialists, nutritionists looking after us. And of course, we're preparing for the next generation of missions, which are to the moon and to Mars, potentially three year missions to Mars. So at the moment, human physiology and the changes that we go through on, during spaceflight and our recovery are really important, so we're learning an awful lot about the human body. If you were offered a three-year mission to Mars, would you go? Right now, with uh, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old, no, I wouldn't. Um, it's too too much of their time, their childhood to be away for, and like you said, I'm a dad, and, and that's a priority. But certainly in the future, gosh, yes, I'd love to have a, a trip to Mars. So the reason you're here this morning is uh, uh, the, the book you have out, what, what a great thing to do. You have got access to the, the... These are the real questions that astronauts, would be astronauts, get asked. Yes. And you put it in a book and, and people can kind of play the game. That's right, yeah. So, so I mean, this is very much the selection process that I went through and, and over 8,000 others in 2008, 2009. Uh, and it's what the European Space Agency were looking for in terms of astronaut candidates. And it's a sort of mixture of maths, physics, uh, psychology, whether you're suited, all sorts of things. Yeah, so the book really follows the same selection process we went through. Hard skills was right up front, uh, you know, these non-trainable skills, spatial awareness, concentration, memory retention, and then it goes into the softer skills of communication and teamwork, logic, uh, critical thinking, decision making. See, it's interesting you call those softer skills, because I, from reading the book and having spoken to you about and what has to go on, the softer skills seem like the crucial skills. Yes, uh, they are crucial and, and they come later on in the selection process. Um, but to a degree, so some of the softer skills can be, you can improve and you can train and we certainly spend a lot of time training, for example, living down a cave for seven days or underwater for 12 days. You can really improve your soft skills. The hard skills, to a degree, you've either got it or you haven't. And so we're gonna do, you're gonna play Quizmaster right. in a way for okay. us now. You've got questions prepared which are based on what's in the what's in the book. Yeah. So I think we can see that we're going to see 
So effectively, the question is set up in the form of a clip we can show now. Is okay. that right? Hello, planet Earth. This is Tim Peake. Could you lend a hand with this puzzle? Imagine that you're facing this cube. It can roll left, right, forwards, or backwards. There's a dot on the bottom. Now, in your mind, roll the cube. Forward, left, left, right, backwards, right. Where's the dot now? See, everyone's going to be doing that at home, right? <laughs> Can I just say, first of all, yeah. I get very confused with these kind of things, I'll be honest with you. When it says the cube left, I'm thinking straight away there's two lefts. Mm -hmm. Because there's a kind of forward left and a backward left. Why? So, why? Why can't you just see no, something no, can simply? I explain? Can I? Can, can you pass <laughs> yeah, me the sure. cube? So that you showed us the cube. How can I illustrate this? It's my theory. The cube is kind of like that as we looked at it, and, and you said roll it to the left. Yeah. So I'm thinking that that's left, which is kind of forwards left, and that's backwards left, isn't it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, not really. I mean, you can spin the cube or roll the cube. I'm, so. I'm already... I've just failed so the space test, right? That's a, a roll left, a roll right, a backwards and a forward. But the way it was positioned on our picture... Charlie, was... leave it. Let it be. <laughs> Let it be. Did we get the answer right? Have we, did, you, did we try? Because is, is that the same one that's in the book? Uh, there are a few in the book, yeah. so it's one of the ones, We better yes. do the answer, haven't we? Yeah, OK, let's show that, because you've probably forgotten the question. Oh, you haven't? All right, Tim, so, tell us the answer. So, so yeah, the answer forward. is on the left-hand side. So if you go yeah. through it, it's, it's forwards, left, left, right, backwards, right. So it ends up on the left-hand side. Uh, and, and this is just one of the, the tests. We were given a number of these, one after the other. Uh, and this really sort of tests your spatial awareness. Um, vital for things like spacewalking. When you're on a spacewalk and you look at a work site, you have to think, OK, how is that going to look when I'm upside down? Where's my positioning for tools, for equipment, uh, and your ability to be able to mentally... Okay. Can, I just, can I just say one thing no. in my defence? No. Just one thing. <laughs> no. Is it a useful quality to question your instructions? Uh, absolutely, yes. You, oh, have, to, you have to have clarity, uh, clarity of instructions, okay. yes. OK. Good. So, OK, so... Uh, it's pretty even, Stevens, because you're the inquisitor and I just do as I'm told. Uh, would you like to ask us another question to see who might be more suitable? OK, uh, so this is a bit more of on the sort of psychological softer skill. So uh, whilst performing a, a procedure for a science experiment, you realise you've performed a couple of steps in the wrong order. Uh, you assess that it's likely the end result will not be affected by this and no harm has been done. So do you, A... Continue with the procedure, but make a written note to Mission Control about the incorrect order of the steps. B. Inform Mission Control of your mistake by voice prior to continuing any further. C. Continue with the procedure. You assess that it will have no impact. Or D. Ask a crewmate for a second opinion. Are you allowed to choose more than one? Well, absolutely. I mean, you can discuss the problem, yeah. I would ask a crewmate for a second opinion because I think communication is key. And I also think even though I've assessed that it's not going to impact the procedure, I would make a note of it because I do think that's valuable Which information. That? So D and A are the No, you two. can't have two. Tim Pete just said <laughs> I okay, could have two. So I'm going A. I'm afraid uh, that wouldn't score particularly well. We, we would like, uh, uh, when it comes to science experiments, we did over 300 science experiments on board the space station, and so it's impossible for you to be an expert on board. Uh, and when it comes to science, we don't take any risks, so we just get on the radio and own up straight away about the mistake before continuing any further. Uh, the problem is, of course, is what, what might appear something very trivial to you is extremely important to people back on the ground. That's interesting. So, sorry, it was answer B. Yeah, OK. So, now, th there's lots and lots of questions about uh, sort of behaviour. On, on that note, behaviour, you know, if, if someone's doing something to annoy you, for example. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, what approach do you take? I'm just chucking that one out there. You, what approach do you, you feel, take? Can you do feel you, the love? Do you, say, do you say something up front? Do you hold it back and talk to your bosses, you know, back at Mission Control? Uh-huh. Uh, 
What, what's the what's the kind of theory on that one? Yeah, I mean, you have a number of options available to you, and you also the benefit is you know your crew members really well. By the time you fly, you've been training for years with them. Um, we would always try and sort problems out directly amongst the crew ourselves. That's the that's the easiest way. You tell an interesting story over lunch though, when you were having or not lunch, you were having a meal, and um, one of the Russian cosmonauts mm. um, was got a bit upset with you because you were talking while you were eating, and that's not the tradition in that way. Uh, so it comes down to communication in that sense. How did you resolve yeah, that? Yeah, so that was with, actually was with one of my colleagues uh, that that happened with. And it, it, it comes down to this uh, issue with cultural problems as well. And that's why the, the cave training was great, because we do that as a, mu uh, a mixture of astronauts from all over the world. So you get to learn about people's different cultures. And something like it, it being important not to talk when you're eating a meal you know, in one culture is very different to perhaps our culture, where it's all about socializing and enjoying. Um, so in that aspect, Again, it's just a, talk, uh, a case of talking directly to the people and, and understanding what, what's good. Uh, can I ask you, Tim, you know there's a phrase, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Is there a rule amongst you fellow astronauts, and you're a small group, that there are some things that no one else will ever know? Uh, that's the yes, there are some things that no one else will ever know. And what are they? Um, in terms of. <laughs> well, it's worth asking, isn't it? Terms, this might be the moment. And this is one of the things you, you realize with space station operations is as soon as something comes down to mission control, it's, it's a big deal. So you want to make absolutely sure that you're, you know, you're not opening a can of worms. So your point about um, talking to another crew member, actually, that, you know, that's partly right. If you're in doubt, we would talk to each other and say, OK, is, is it time now to get on the radio? We have a problem. But there's always that little moment of a sanity check there, because you know if you're about to say something on the radio, it could open up a whole can of worms. Can we do a quick fire round? We've got two minutes okay. left. And also, Matt has a question as well. I'll do two, Charlie. You do two. Does that work? Mm -hmm. uh, our editor, um, our output editor today says, what does it smell like on the space station? Uh, it smells very clinical, very metallic. Um, it's a laboratory, so there's lots of pieces of, of uh, you know, uh, experiments going on. Mike wants to know, um, favourite games you play in space? Favourite games? I saw uh, my crewmates playing tennis the other day. Uh, we have a, a you know, box of tricks up there, so tennis was, was fun. Actually, just weightlessness. Weightlessness itself is so much fun. You don't need any other games. Uh, someone's asking about uh, talking to crewmates when you're up there. Is there an echo, or is it... Like being in a regular place? No, it's just like here in the studio. It's just about this temperature, this pressure, uh, and uh, no echo. Um, is there something that you did on the space station that you can't do on Earth that you wish you could? Um, Spacewalking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was by far the best experience in space you could possibly have. But of course, and so now just tell us uh, on the on the question answer thing. Someone goes through that on the whole gets the correct answers. I mean, mm. clearly they're not easy. Those questions. There's a lot of judgment calls there. I mean, is they, are they genuinely thinking, do you know what, I could do this? I mean, it's a great thought, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And there's a mixture in the book, of course, there's a mixture of um, some, are hard, some are harder, but some are, are much easier. And that was very much how our selection process was run. Some of them was, were surprisingly easy, but then the odd hard one is thrown in there. The softer skills, there's definitely more option for discussion, as we've had, uh, whereas the hard skills, it's kind of black and white as to what the answer is. We should say your book is called The Astronaut Selection Test Book, pretty much says what it does what it says on the tin. Uh, do you have what it takes for space? Um, yeah. I know someone else who adores um, the whole idea of space and everything. Matt, look how excited you are, Matt. I've never seen you look so excited. <laughs> what's I've your question? I've been listening intently. Have you? What's your uh, question for Tim? Morning, Tim. Uh, when morning, we were watching Matt. you return uh, to space with my daughters, and thanks for getting them so enthused in space, uh, all I can think of is how terrifying is it returning to Earth at such speed in what is effectively a big tin can? Uh, yes, terrifying. We, we, astronauts never liked to use the word terrifying. I mean, exhilarating, <laughs> uh, exciting, but it, ultimately, yes, you're very aware. You're coming back 25 times the speed of sound. Uh, outside, it's about 1,700 Celsius, and everything is burning outside the window. You're pulling a lot of Gs of deceleration. It gets extremely hot, uh, but it's a crazy ride. It's like the world's best roller coaster. Sean did ask, actually, what, is there a moment that's the most intense going the, up or the, down? Yes, I think the most intense is when when the parachute opens, because for 20 yeah. seconds, you're still going just over the speed of sound when the parachute opens, the braking chutes. Uh, it's very violent, very dynamic manoeuvre. You're thrown around. It's a non-technical question, but they test uh, potential astronauts for clumsiness, because I imagine of all the qualities <laughs> in space, it's just like a really, you know, it's like, oops, I pushed the, you know. 
Who yeah, tests yeah. people? Thankfully I mean, not. coordination, I suppose, is part of it. Coordination, yes, but thankfully not clumsy. I'm the, I'm the most clumsy person. Oh, you? Well. Yeah. I, I've pushed so many wrong buttons in, in my career <laughs> as a test pilot. It sounds like so. the one thing you just <laughs> don't want in space. I have a very curious mind. So I remember in the Soyuz simulator in Moscow one time, I, I was literally playing around and crashed all three simulators for a whole afternoon. So thankfully they don't test for clumsiness. And they let you into space. <laughs> my goodness. Tim, it's been an absolute joy having you with us on the Thank sofa. You. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Matt, follow that. I don't know if I can, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll take a view of uh, the uh, UK from space, shall we? What we expect over the next few days. Very good morning to you. Uh, certainly a day of contrast today. And